Welcome to this morning's worship, and would you please uh, stand while we sing our gathering song, Hosanna. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble, my eyes consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I am the scorn of my enemies, a disgrace to my neighbors, a dismay to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. Like, like the dead, dead I, I am forgotten. forgotten. Out, Out of mind, I am, I am as useless as a broken, as a broken pot. pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But, but as, as for me, me I, have I have trusted, trusted you, you, O Lord. Lord. I have said, you, you are my God. God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your, let your face shine upon the servant. 
save me and save us love. And we continue with the King of all of me. One, two, ready. May be seated. And we'll continue our, pra our praising with "That's Why We Praise Him." One, two, ready.
That's why we praise Him. That's why we sing. That's why we offer Him our everything. That's why we bow down and worship this King. Because He gave me. stand for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who brings us out of captivity into freedom, out of the wilderness into the promised land, out of death into life. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. Forgive us and give us strength to turn from sin and to serve you in the newness of life. Amen. By water and the Holy Spirit, God gives us new birth, and through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives us all our sins. Almighty God, strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life. Amen. And we'll sing once again. One, two, three. Hey. Jesus Christ, I think upon your sacrifice, you became nothing. Poured out to death many times. I wonder at your gift of life, and I'm in that place once again. And I'm in that place once again. And once again I look upon the cross where you die. I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside. Once again I thank you. Once again I pour out my life. Now you are exalted in the highest place, King of the heavens, where one day I'll bow. But for now, I marvel at your saving grace, and I'm full of praise once again. I'm full of praise once again. And once again I look upon the cross where you died. I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside. Once again I thank you. Once again I pour out my life. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross, my friend. Thank you for the cross, thank you for the cross, thank you for the cross, my friend. Thank you for the cross, thank you for the cross, thank you for the cross, the cross, my friend. Thank you for the cross, 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 my friend. And once again. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, 
who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Would the ushers come forward to have our offering, and the chair of choir will be singing for us this morning. <laughs> first reading is from the 50th chapter of Isaiah, beginning with verse 4. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. The second reading is from the second chapter of Philippians, beginning with verse 5. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was 
in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark the 15th, not 14th, 15th chapter, reading verses 1 through 39. Now this is a lengthy reading, and if you need to sit down at some point, I understand. I may even sit down, but then you won't be able to see me. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priest accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? 
for he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them, why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, cloak, cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him. Hail, king of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, and he did, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to the side what each would take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Ah, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, elema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it for him, to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last. He said, truly this man was God's son. The Gospel of the Lord. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, you bring us to this time of worship to experience more fully your walk in Jesus Christ. That walk reflected both joy and sorrow, fulfillment and pain, life and death. A walk that parallels our own. Help us to embrace your lordship, your truth, your way, and lives that point to you as the one on whom all history rests. In your gracious name we pray. Amen. Sometimes some things are better empty than full. That space between the layers of insulation in your jacket? Well, when empty, that space permits the buildup of body heat. Boots and garments are made this way, much better empty than full. Or fields at harvest time, brimming with their crops, time to get the crops in, that part of the, part of the work needs to be done, and that point, the fields are better empty than full. That big job is done. And garbage cans, empty or full, my vote is empty. I much prefer them empty than full. Yes, indeed, there are many concrete examples in life. There are things all around us that are much better empty than full. We could probably come up with a whole long list, although it might be harder to come up with things that are better empty than things that are better full. What else is better empty than full? Where we're told Jesus Christ. The text from St. Paul's letter to the church of Philippi, which Donna read a moment ago, says this. 
Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Remarkable. Jesus Christ rejects the privileges of his position. He abandoned all of those possibilities. His very Godhead as the king of the universe, those perks that go along with being the God and king of the universe, the robes, the crowns, the riches, and the rewards. Can you imagine for a moment yourself doing something like that? You receive all these privileges, come to this place in your life where you're doing pretty well and emptying yourself of all those things, giving yourself to even those who turn their back on you, giving all you are and have to those who scoff at your teachings, sacrificing and suffering so much for those who mock what you're trying to do. I can hardly imagine that. I can hardly imagine giving myself even to those who would do those things. But Jesus Christ did. He sacrificed everything and he suffered mightily for it. Why? That's such a simple answer. To save you. He did it to save you. He emptied himself of all that to save you. Jesus came into this world with nothing, wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. He would leave this world with very little else but those same swaddling cloths. Some people like to say you can't take it with you. The it was not even a consideration for Jesus. St. Paul was writing to the church at Philippi to teach them of Jesus and to teach them what that means for our living in this world. And the words of St. Paul are just as relevant for us today as they ever were. First of all, he has the audacity to suggest we have the, should have the same mind in us that was in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Bottom line, we live in a world of fullness. And we hear constantly how it should be more full. Full of life, things, activities, privileges. That is the world as it is. But Paul calls the church at Philippi and he calls us to live in a world as it should be. So if emptying oneself was in the mind of Jesus, then we are to empty ourselves. Look, if, it's really neat the way Paul unfolds this in the rest of Scripture. In 2 Corinthians, he likens you to a vessel. He calls you a clay pot. Now we all know a clay pot, a vessel, is a tool. It's defined for a constructive purpose. Jars may be filled with medicine for the sick or water for the thirsty, food for the hungry, love for the broken. If those jars are already filled with other stuff, they cannot be used for that constructive purpose that God calls us to. Lord knows there are lots of stuff in my jars and we are called then to try to lay aside, to seek to lay aside every hindrance that blocks our vessel from being used for God's purposes. And there are so many hindrances. I constantly hear how busy people are. And that can be a hindrance. It's like the word no is not in our vocabulary anymore. I'm serious. Just say no. Or it could be as serious as bitterness towards a fellow Christian, which Scripture outlines as inappropriate. Reconciliation is, but not bitterness. We just say no to bitterness. We're to serve our Lord, and if God is to be our master, we will have to continually make room for God, because our jars will constantly get filled with some of the wrong stuff. And this is very practical stuff. The reason it's practical is that I see how full the jars are in this congregation. 
filled to bursting. And it's not that you don't want to make room for God. Of course you do. But I look at faces that are, are worn by, by intensity and by schedules and by all the pressures of the day. And I think, how in the world can we hear God? I go through the same thing. How can we hear God in the midst of all of that to, to find the abundant life? That's the abundant life. It's a simpler life. Very practical. Well, we've got to be aware that once we start giving ourselves over to this, no half measures will work. Being kind of empty is being a little like being kind of pregnant, if you know what I mean. C.S. Lewis, one of my favorite writers, likened God to a dentist. Now, how many honestly like going to the dentist? You raise your hand, I'm calling you out. <laughs> you make an appointment and you go. You got a toothache or something's going wrong in there, and you think, oh, I don't have much choice because nobody's come up with a better solution than a dentist. Dentist gets in there, makes the corrections that are necessary. Ooh. But you feel better, all well and good. Well, if your dentist is anything like my dentist, he doesn't stop there. Oh, no. He takes a tool called a probe who thought of that name for that instrument? And who thought to call it a probe in front of the patient? He takes the probe and he starts picking around at the gum line and he starts picking around at the other teeth and you're praying to God you don't feel that horrible sense of pain that will inevitably mean a longer appointment or another appointment, God forbid. C.S. Lewis says God is like that. When we commit ourselves to Jesus Christ, we find that God will help us up and enable us to move forward in faith. And Lord knows God has put into place so many things to help us do just that. We have the Holy Spirit that graces us with God's presence. God has given us this family of faith where we might live out our covenant. God gives us the faith in the first place at baptism. And he nourishes that faith at his holy table. All well and good. But Jesus won't stop there. He means to have all of you, not just a little bit. He means to have all of you. A piety that does not pour out itself, yes, totally empty itself out of love for others, is a faith that's only giving a little bit. It's a faith that cannot possibly grow because the jars are too full. So that is better empty than full. Jesus and us. You know what else is better empty than full? An empty cross and an empty tomb. We can just think about that. Amen. Would you please stand and let's join together and confess our faith? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. Who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born under Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We proceed at this time with the dedication of worship furnishings. Let us please bow our heads in prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. You have enriched our lives with every good and perfect gift. You have commanded us to show your splendor to our children, to praise you with lives of love, justice, and joy. Accept these pyramids which we offer in thanksgiving. May they adorn this house, show us the beauty of holiness, and proclaim the glory of your majesty. Accept as well these flower vases on the altar which we offer in thanksgiving. May they serve to increase our vision of your glory 
to remind us of your goodness and to support our calling to worship you in spirit and truth. Bring us all at length to your perfect kingdom where you live and reign with the Son and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. We are so grateful for the sacrifice of the Bull family that made these pyramids and flower vases possible. Uh, if you know anything about altar furnishings or worship furnishings, and Ed Stofcheck will start nodding real hard at this point because he's our financial secretary, you know how pricey they are. And so it's no small gift, but it still, still is designed to point us to Christ in any way, shape, or form that it can. Ironically, too, how lavish this gift is, these pyramids are only used one day of the year. They're used on Easter, so they will be on our altar and on our bodies uh, come Easter, and so we give thanks for that. Let us continue with our prayer. We pray for the church, the congregations be a home for the lost, a haven for the oppressed, and a source of healing for those broken by life's circumstances. Today we pray especially for St. Petri Lutheran Church in Toledo and their leaders. We pray for new life springing forth from the church, for those who groan in labor, those who are adopting children, and those who are unable to conceive. We pray for Christians who do not have the freedom to worship openly, for political prisoners, refugees, widows, and orphans. We pray for those who care for the weary and vulnerable, nurses, hospice workers, child care providers, and social workers. We pray for those in any need, especially those who are listed in our bulletin, as well as any we name aloud at this time. We give you thanks for the birth of Lily Ann to Mark and Ashley Kohler, and to the birth of Caden James to Kevin and Gretchen Jolla. We also pray, dear Lord, for the family and friends of Marie Gillette. We pray for those in care facilities, those bound at home and their caregivers, and we ask your blessings upon the military. We offer our prayers for all others who we think of this day. We pray for this assembly as it enters Holy Week. Sustain our ministers, musicians, staff, volunteers, and all those who will prepare for and lead worship this week and bring us all to the joy of Easter. Hallelujah. We give thanks for the blessed saints who showed us how to live and taught us how to die. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, <coughs> thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the wisdom and power of Christ Jesus, and the light of the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. We continue with Jesus Messiah. So I 
Messiah. 